in this midday heat, even, even this headdress, you know, it's just getting roasting hot. And I've got to think of some way uh, just to keep my head cool and what I can do and then, and then pee on it. The heat here is just incredible. You know, it's well over 110 degrees. The biggest killer in these deserts are heat stroke and dehydration. But priority number one for me now is to get off the top of this tabletop. But getting off is easier said than done. The risk when coming down a face like this is that you climb yourself into a position when you can't go up or down. When this happens, it's called getting rim rocked. Uh, but if this does happen, there's a technique that they teach in the special forces for being able to make a jump of like 15 foot. And the idea is when you jump, you keep your feet together, knees slightly bent, and when you land, you roll and you spread the impact along your legs and then around your back. A really good way of finding water in these canyons is looking for clumps of vegetation and water hungry plants and and actually this is a really good example this tamarisk and just a small bush like this is capable of sucking up up to 20 gallons of water a day from these like aquifers, which are these underground chambers of water. And this is a very good sign that there's a water source uh, somewhere nearby. I found the canyon that I was looking for and there's a good chance there's water down there because there's plenty of shade. And there must be water down here somewhere. And this is what I've been looking for. Just this line of mineral deposits. Uh, that's the indicator that there's a seep somewhere nearby uh, and water trickling out of one of these aquifers. And you can actually see this little pool of water uh, that's formed here. And what's happening is it's filling up and then it's running away. And if I can just dig this out a bit and then dam it and stop that water seeping out. I'll get a good amount of water there. Probably in a few minutes that will fill up. And then I just need a way of collecting it and drinking it. I'm looking for a plant called a trumpet flower. Native Americans use it as a pipe because it has a hollow stem. So, but I've got to be pretty careful uh, cutting this just because if I try and just break it off, it's going to splinter. So what I'm going to do is just score all the way around the bottom and then the same at the top. And this means when I come to snap it off, it's going to come away cleanly. And that's going to be great. The reservoir is filled up with water. Means actually, even though it looks pretty murky, this water is, is well filtered. And I can almost guarantee that this is better quality water than you get in most cities, uh, just the tap water. When you're dehydrated, it's important to drink slowly, as guzzling too much water too fast can make you vomit. Mm. Ah, that's so good. I'm getting really hungry now, and I need something that's just going to give me some energy. And this is just the sort of place, this little gully, uh, that birds or ravens would be, would be nesting. And if I can just get myself one of those, it would be amazing. Catching a bird without a trap is nearly impossible, but I might be able to find some eggs bird droppings of feathers will give away their location. There's a broken eggshell here, which means there is definitely a nest somewhere up here. 
Here we go. It looks like a chucker's nest here. And these eggs are bigger. These are more like these are more like raven's eggs, and this is what ravens do. They'll tend to uh, drive a little bird away from its nest and then lay its own eggs uh, in it. I'm going to eat these. I'm going to have one now. I'm going to keep one for later. One more. All bird eggs are edible. Even the shell is a good source of calcium. And I'm so hungry, I can't help but eat it raw. But there is a risk of catching salmonella. So I'm gonna try and cook the other one. It's probably about 120 degrees out here in the heat at the moment. And this is, this undoubtedly the hottest place I've ever been in my life. Mm. Well, that's one of the best scrambled eggs I've had. <laughs> I've rehydrated and my canteen is full again. Now I need to come up with another plan for getting out of this desert. And the best way of finding a route is to survey the land from high ground. What I'm looking for is just any signs of vegetation, you know, trees, bushes. I don't know if you can see that, but there's this line of vegetation along there and that's the markings uh, of a river. And in the desert where there's a river, there's almost always human habitation. I've entered an area of dense vegetation and the bushes around me can give me a clue as to how far I have to go. And there it is. And there's also uh, a windmill the other side and what I'm hoping is that there's going to be a house or something uh, nearby. The windmill on the other side is telling me I can't be far from civilization, but to get to it I'm going to have to swim the Colorado River. The way to cross wide rivers like this is to swim diagonally and with the current. Because the current in this river is so strong it's impossible to swim against it. much faster flowing than I first thought. Now I'm actually in it and I'm being pulled fast downstream. I just hope there's going to be somebody actually over here. I know there are small communities scattered all along the rivers that run through the Moab. Wherever there's a river in the desert, there's bound to be civilization somewhere along the banks. <laughs> 